this morning's operation rounded off a four month long joint investigation meant to curb the ever increasing heroin and drug problem that's going on here in the county, namely in the Topton area. While officials say the suspects charged are lower level dealers, 12 reportedly had the potential to deliver a fatal dose. Of the 13 charged, Berks County District Attorney John Adams says two were Brandywine Heights High School students, including one 18 year old male senior. Growing up, life was fine. You know, I, I had everything that I uh, really ever wanted. My parents were always there for me. Um, my parents stayed together throughout, you know, me being a child, so I didn't grow up in a separate family or anything like that. And uh, they tried their best to give me anything or anything I wanted, and for the most part, I got it. I did all, like, I started getting high when I was about 12, so it would have been about seven years until um, I finally got clean. Like about eight, maybe. Well, it all started. Like a lot, of, a lot of the drugs I did before heroin was, you know, I smoked a lot of, I smoked a lot of weed. I drank. Mostly, it started though with the downfall is I started doing prescription drugs like Percocet. But I mean, I did all sorts of drugs throughout it. I did anything I could get my hands on. I did cough medicine if I had to. You know, not like drugs that you probably shouldn't be doing to get high. I did anything I could to get high. I don't really blame anybody else for, you know, what the drugs I did. I mean, I was, the people I hung out with sort of did the drugs too, so, you know, they were there, but they didn't force it on me. Sometimes they didn't even offer it to me. Sometimes I just asked them for it and they gave it to me. So I can't really blame anybody else other than myself. I started heroin, when, when I really started to do the, the Percocets and the opiates and stuff like that, and I really started to like it. I, you know, I couldn't get a hold of that as much as I thought I would be able to, and it was also pretty expensive um, compared to when I got told that heroin is actually cheaper and easier to find. And uh, you know, so I sort of just I blocked out the fact of all the stuff I learned when I was a kid about heroin and just pretended it was, you know, maybe like a perk or something like that. You know, something different. And uh, you know, and I started doing it a lot more because of that because it was a lot cheaper a lot easier to find and all together it was a lot better, the high technically. I come from Topton which is a very very small town, you know, you, you almost know everybody that lives there per se, you, you could go to any street and you know what street you're on and kids can find that easier than they could find a place to eat. It's, it's, uh, it's everywhere. Um, and it's not just Topton, it's not, that's not the only small town that's affected by it. Um, it's all over the place and you know, it's so cheap that when people bring it in, they can just give it away pretty much. And at first it wasn't as bad, um, when, before I got really serious into it, school, it didn't affect school actually at all. I still got good grades and stuff like that. But then it started to get really bad and uh, I started skipping school a lot. I barely was there at all or I'd leave early. Or if I was at school, I was like just sleeping or you know not really paying any attention to anything because I didn't want to be there. The only thing I wanted to do was get out of there and get high. So you know it, it, it drastically affected my school life. I actually almost didn't graduate because of it. Um, I actually graduated by like the skin of my teeth and by the help of uh, teachers at the school who were willing to help me no matter what. And luckily, uh, that's the only reason I graduated. I've seen, I, I saw a student who changed physically, uh, mentally, became more aggressive, became more closed, wouldn't talk to me in way, you know, if I asked a question, would hide, would lie to me about things, um, would minimize uh, all the traits. I mean, all, all the traits that there's something going on in our life. Well, I don't know what that was at the time, but, um, you know, I, it didn't take long for me to put together the, the facts of the case. and. Um, he became Jekyll and Hyde. There it is, being Jekyll and Hyde. He, he, was, he was a totally different person, 180 degrees. In my family though, uh, you know, it, that, I mean, it was almost instantaneously that uh, my family life started to drastically change and stuff like that. My parents, um, me and my parents uh, didn't get along 100% prior to me doing heroin because of me doing other drugs, but it got extremely worse. With that, um, there were a lot of times where they just they have to kick me out because of how bad it was, and uh, 
you know, and, or a lot of times I just couldn't trust, you know, they didn't have any trust in me and I don't blame them. I didn't give them any reason not to, or to trust me, but uh, they definitely, it definitely changed extremely. The only way I could really uh, support the habit I had was to start selling it. And, uh, you know, it, it made it a little easier. Um, not really, it made my usage go up a lot higher. I started using a lot more because I had a lot more. Um, and then even when I had a job, uh, I always needed more, no matter what. I had money and I still needed more. So I had to continue to sell it um, to try to support that habit that never stopped. It just always got more, always was more and more and more. Um, you know, like the worst, the worst thing is, is like uh, when I was there, when I was doing it, I didn't, I didn't think I had a problem. Um, I probably didn't notice that it was such a bad problem until a month or two when I finally got my head clear and I started to get clean. Um, I was, it was hell, life was hell, and, uh, but the drug messed up with my head so much that I just kept saying, you're fine, and uh, it'll get better if you just keep getting high. And so, you know, like, part of the reason I started to change it a little bit is because I was, I was homeless at the time, I didn't really have anywhere to go. Um, I was sort of like living on the streets or just sleeping on people's couches for as long as I could. You know, when I got arrested, it was pretty uh, crappy, I'd say. You know, it wasn't the best. I didn't really see it coming. At the time, I wasn't really uh, selling, per se, like they uh, accused me of. I was sort of just getting stuff for people and then getting something out of it. And, uh, you know, it was pretty scary. I, I uh, was actually going to go to rehab, and I came home, and there was a note on the door from the cops. And, you know, so we contacted the police um, instead of running. And when they came, they came, they came like I was a serious, you know, like I did something extremely serious, and I did, but not the way I think they acted. Um, they came in, guns pulled. Uh, my family was there, my parents were right there. They pushed right past my parents. Um, they took me out, you know, they, they put me in a car right in front of my parents. It was, uh, you know, at the time, I thought it would have been an eye opener. Unfortunately, I can't say I got clean after I got arrested. Um, I went to three official rehabs, like, 30 day or more programs and then I was in a uh, dual facility psych ward uh, rehab for 14 days. So about four. And then once I got there my head cleared up and it made me realize how bad it really was and how big of a problem it really was. But it messed up my head so much I couldn't see it while I was doing it. One of the big things that helped with that last one is I, I think the biggest part is I actually wanted to do it. Um, the first two I didn't really want to be clean. Uh, the first one, especially, I was forced to go to when I got arrested. It was just for me to get out of jail. And uh, so I didn't take that seriously at all. And uh, the same with the second one. So when I got to that third one, I think one of the biggest things is I really wanted to do it. Um, but another thing is it was a very, it was a very different rehab. Uh, it was a longer program. It was 90 days, but it was a lot more lenient. Um, they took you to the gym. Uh, it was a little smaller, it was more comfortable housing and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, I, it made me realize that I can get clean in sort of a normal environment and have fun being clean other than the other two, which were just, it was strictly wooden chairs and groups all day. And it wasn't as fun for me. It didn't make me want to stay clean the way it was. It's about time you guys ass in gear. That's what I have to say to him. It's about time because he wasted three to four years doing nonsense that, that affected him and, and his family, his brother, his friends, and, and people that cared about him. And the hardest part about the whole process is, you know, because you care about someone or you want the best for someone, you want to get involved in their life and then you're seen as meddling because they don't want you involved. It's not that they don't, but they, they don't at some uh, in some way. So they, they want to be, you know, they want to stay away from you, um, but you want to keep trying because they're not worth giving up on. My life has changed I mean, it's almost, it's a complete 180, I'd have to say. Um, you know, the less important part, so it's like physically, uh, you know, I used to weigh 130 pounds, I weigh 185 pounds now. Um, you know, I, I have color to my skin where I used to be all pale and shrunk up. Um, I have an appetite like a pig, I eat all the time where I used to never eat anything at all. Uh, you know, I have, I have a good job. I make a uh, good amount of money to support the family I sort of started or I'm starting, but most importantly, mentally and uh, emotionally has changed a lot. Um, 
mentally I feel like I'm here a lot of times where I used to space out a lot um, and emotionally you know I can actually be happy and be happy without having to do some sort of drug or alcohol to enforce that or make it you know there um, it's a real happiness and stuff like that and on top of that I can be sad or I can be mad and have control more control of my emotions than I ever did when I was getting high and that's like one of the biggest and most important changes that I feel because that eventually will, will work down to my relationships with my family and uh, relationships with my friends and everything like that. I don't care. No. <laughs> Gotta have the Eagles hat on. I'm still in trouble with, with legal situations, with probation and stuff like that. I have groups and meetings I have to go to. Um, I go to the gym every day. Um, that's uh, clear, you know, they say mind, body, and spirit will always help, so that's help my body and my meetings and stuff for that are for my mind and my spirit. Besides that and work, I work a lot um, to keep it, you know, just keep myself busy. And in my free time, I just spend time with my daughter or the few friends that I do have. And that just really is the best thing for me to do. You know, they, none of that there is ever gonna push me to drugs, thank God. Throughout the whole, you know, year or so, it's been a lot of struggles, I could say. not extremely hard struggles, just ups and downs, you know, um, but I haven't really gotten close, I'd say, to going back. Um, there are times where I've thought it, and uh, there's times I could go a day and I have to say it ten times not to get high. Um, you know, the, the thoughts never really leave. Uh, every day I have to wake up and remind myself, like, you got to get through this day clean. And uh, so, you know, but luckily I haven't had parts where I've gone back. I haven't done that yet, and uh, that's very, I'm very happy about that. Um, but the worst, you know, the best thing for me to do is not to, to, to be, stay away from that situation. To people who are out there who are still using, um, people who are just trying to get clean, people who, you know, might, you know, whatever they might, their problem might be, my best advice is just not give up. You can't give up. I mean, it's not over till it's over. And uh, no matter how far down you go, no matter what you lose, no matter where you are, you can always come back. You can always make it better. You can turn your life around to ways you wouldn't even imagine. And uh, the most important thing to do is just never give up. Um, and you know, to the people who might still be out there using, who are really suffering, who feel like, you know, I did at one point, like no one cared. Uh, people care, um, no matter what. No matter what they say to you, they're saying it out of love. And uh, if you don't believe that, just know that I care.